What's going on, geeks and gamers? This is Ryan with RK Outpost. Today we're coming to you with some more Expanded Universe content. And this time I brought with me a couple other fans of the Expanded Universe that are also a part of the Fandom Menace. So I will go ahead and let them introduce themselves to you. Uh, first, let's go with Lethal Lightning. Lethal, how you doing, bud? Cold, but thank you for having me on, Ryan. It's good <laughs> to be here. I love the EU and I'm keen to get into the talk. Awesome. And we've also got Chris Knight. Chris, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm ready to talk about some fun stuff here. Excellent. Um, so both these guys have awesome channels. Um, their links will be in the description of the video. So definitely when you're done checking us out here, make sure you go check out Sub and watch their stuff because they produce some amazing content as well. Um, but obviously the reason that we're here today is because we all have experiences one way or another in the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Um, so, Leith, I'll go. I'll let you go ahead first. What got you involved in the Star Wars Expanded Universe? Uh, I actually did a whole video about this, I think around the start of the year. But what it was, was when I was a kid in primary school, I don't know if you had it over there, but there used to be these things that would come around. It was like a catalog of crap you could buy. And I begged, I begged my dad to buy me the Star Wars book. I believe it was part of not The Last Jedi, but Last of the Jedi series. And it was the second book. So I had no idea what was going on, but I just wanted it because the cover was cool. And I read it and I was like, yeah, I got to get more of this. And then that kind of led into video games, like the original Star Wars Battlefront 2 for me. Um, that's EU. I think a lot of people don't realize just how expansive the EU actually is. And then from there, it just became one thing after another. And then I read um, Airdly Empire and then that was it. I was sucked in. There's, there's no turning back. Seems like uh, once everybody gets to that book, it's no going back for you. Um, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, when you say expanded universe, people just think the books um, and they don't realize all of the comic books, all of the young adult series, all of the video games that are you know, so praised and so enjoyed by so many people. That's all expanded universe content too. Um, what about you, Chris? How'd you get into the EU? Well, I actually been around since star wars started so uh i think i was like seven or eight the first book i read and it was uh splinter of the mind's eye so Ooh. that's like a 1978 book it was right after star wars the novelization of the movie and uh i started there the next uh set of books the first trilogy of books i read was the han solo trilogy the uh, han solo at star's end han solo's revenge and then han solo and the lost legacy and I was a big Han Solo fan. I still am. That's my guy. That's my guy. And so when I got into that, that hooked me. Um, when video game consoles came out, of course, the first, you know, the first time I could ever play a Star Wars game, it was like, yes. Um, so, you know, I love the Star Wars games, uh, the pod racing game. Uh, I have, I think I have uh, the fandom, uh, the fandom, I think I have the fan, the Phantom Menace, I think on uh, PlayStation one. <laughs> so, you know, I have a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, that's pretty much my extent on that. I've seen and read some of the comics. I never got big into the comics. My thing was always the books, but that's how I was raised. So, you know, that was one of those things. Yeah, I, I got you. Same for me. I really got into the books at first and then, once I had seen all I could, I really then reached out and saw what else there was. And it wasn't until then I got in the comics. Um, for myself, you know, at, at my age, the first, the first Star Wars movie that I saw in theaters was The Phantom Menace. And I, I was so excited after I saw that. I was about 11 years old, I guess, at the time, 1999, so right around there. And much like you were talking about lethal at school you know they have these this scholastic things that they hand out that they show all these different scholastic books. yeah all these different books that they have for sale and you know i convinced my mom to get me uh jedi apprentice so the first book about obi-wan you know becoming qui-gon's apprentice and i read those read as many of them as i could get my hands on my uncle saw me reading one and said star wars books I have some of those you might like. And he went, you know, back into this back room where he had a huge bookcase and he grabbed Heir to the Empire. And mm -hmm. once again, I was hooked. So I read those, read the X-Wing novels. And, you know, I, I, for a lot of people who get involved in the EU, as long as you, as long as you start in a good spot, 
um, kind of once you pop, the fun don't stop in a way. Uh, you know, you just can't seem to get enough of them at a certain point. Um, so, Chris, uh, you talked about Splinter of the Mind's Eye and uh, the Han Solo trilogy, which is awesome. A, a, good, Han a good Han Solo story. Um, what, what would you say is your favorite um, either book or storyline from the expanded universe? Again, that trilogy of Han Solo. The, uh, I think it was Han Solo's Revenge was the one that sticks in my mind. I I remember, it, you know, the vividness of it. They, uh, I don't know. It, it was just, you know, you t they talked about the stuff that, you know, you didn't get to see in the movies and stuff. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to remember some of the places that were went to. Uh, you know, they had uh, ho hollow documentaries and that, and just some stuff. They expanded the universe for so. You see, you guys talk about the prequels and and how you got into that. And, and, you know, I got, I was in the original trilogy. So for me, we're talking about, we had never had any of this stuff. So anything they brought in, it was always new, you know, new, uh, you know, star ports and, and things like that. The, the stories, the people, it was all brand new. And so even though we had, and, and I say this after the fact, because like I said, I was after Return of the Jedi that I started reading these books to how old I was. But, um, you know, for us growing up, books was it. It was the, it was the mind's eye. It was the, the way to go into a universe that you'd only barely touched. And that's how, I guess, what it, the way it felt was it started opening up. Han Solo just wasn't this renegade in this universe it actually explained why he was the way he was it was more he was always on the run because you know call it what you will the things he did he never was the greatest person in the world he always flubbed up things and you get a sense of that in the movies but you really get a sense of it in the books that you know just things didn't work out with him um you know uh you know i think in uh I want to say in Han Solo's Revenge, he actually tries to go straight in that book, if I remember right. And it just doesn't work out for him. You know, it's like he thinks, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this straight. We're going to go, you know, earn an honest dollar and it doesn't work out for it's, him. It's kind of never the right, the pieces never quite fall together that he's able to get out of the life. Yeah. So, and, you know, not going too far into it, you, you kind of get that sense when they, uh, did the force awakens you kind of see that but that's kind of how it always works out for him uh the other trilogy i got into is the jedi academy uh trilogy mm -hmm. and and i really liked that it, it you know it moved on from uh return of the jedi it showed uh, how luke was trying to continue the jedi and how he went about doing it um it, i don't know it was done really well to uh build on something that we thought at the time when return of the jedi was done that we weren't getting anything else uh i, I guess is we, we were surprised when they announced that they were going to do the the phantom menace it was a i i remember yes they're doing this finally but probably a few months before that was announced nobody thought it was going to happen we, we just thought th these books the comics, the things we were getting, that was where it was going to stay. When we were, we were fine with that. But um, it was, you know, I remember when they announced the new trilogy in the movies that we were like, yes, this is awesome. So, Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, Lethal, what about yourself? What, if you could pick one, what is your favorite storyline in the Expanded Universe? You already know what I'm going to say. We've had a conversation <laughs> about this before. I am a massive shill for Legacy of the Force. Goddamn, that is, to me, that is the granddaddy. That is what it all builds up to. Take the prequels, the original trilogy, um, Air to the Empire, all that. It all ends, for me, with Legacy of the Force. You know, we, my favorite EU character, well, one of my favorite EU characters, Jason Solo, you know, we see him from Air to the Empire when Leia's pregnant with him. We see his whole life all the way up to him, you know, going down the dark path, becoming Darth Kytus and starting the second galactic civil war. It's just 
it's goddamn perfect. I love it. I absolutely love that series. Uh, it's set around the same time as the Disney sequel trilogy, so it's always kind of difficult to not compare them, especially Kyle, especially Kylo Ren, who's just a two cent knockoff of our boy Kytus. But I can't get enough of that series. I, I really cannot. It's just so well written. The last book, Invincible. I think you get to like the last few chapters, man. If, if you don't shed a few tears, I'll, I'll question if you're human. Yeah, it's uh, Invincible is really heart wrenching from the mm-hmm. from the minute from the minute you open that book and you see a quote from young Jason in it, um, and you understand what what that book is leading up to the final confrontation between Jaina and Jason. Uh, you f- have the feels literally from the start of the book all the way to the end. Um, yeah, now I you. Line. There's a line that Jaina says. I really don't want to spoil it for anyone that hasn't read it because I think these books need to be experienced. But she says a line. I think it's like in the last three chapters or something. It's just like a one sentence line that will make you put the book down. You have to go up and pace around and pretend you're not crying. (laughs) Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. And if I had to tell my favorite, say what my favorite expanded universe storyline is, it would probably be Legacy of the Force as well. But um, yeah. Boom, bro fist. But uh, for the sake of making it a little more entertaining, I will not. Um, I will go ahead. I, I really love New Jedi Order, even though a lot of Ooh. people, even though a lot of people uh, have their issues with it, think it might have been too long. I do think it was, uh, I think that New Jedi Order changed what Star Wars, the Expanded Universe was. Up until this point, you know, New Jedi Order started being written or started coming out in 1999. So it was actually coming out along with the prequels, um, which is a little strange. But up until then, we had kind of had these, these couple stories at a time, sometimes trilogies, um, like the Jedi Academy trilogy is a great example, the Thrawn trilogy, um, all written by the same author. And in the end, a lot of stuff went down, but you never felt like the characters were really in trouble. Um, New Jedi Order changed that right off the bat from the first book, um, they do something that changes the way you feel about this characters going forward and realizing that the aura of protection is gone. It doesn't exist anymore for the Solo Skywalker family. And I'm not gonna spoil anything either, but building, I think that New Jedi Order was so important building up to what would become legacy of the force so many of the characters are are really built up in it and it was when they really decided to take continuity extremely seriously they had obviously been doing it before with everything but this time they had an entire panel of people just dedicated to make sure everything all the continuity made sense and that if there were any loose ends from books before that those got tied up and explained if a small retcon was needed to happen And from that point forward, they were extremely careful with it. So I I would say my second favorite, maybe New Jedi Order. Just to touch on that, um, that stream that you and me did with Callum, he, shout out to Callum, he did really well. He said that New Jedi Order was when Star Wars grew up. Oh, yeah, that that was a great quote by him. And actually, um, I was talking to Matt Wilkins the other day, and he he reminded me that uh, there was a quote from... I think Michael, Michael A. Stackpole, who said, if you want your characters to be safe, go read Star Trek. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, and yeah, it, did, it definitely got darker there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like you said, the, just because you were a Solo or a Skywalker, that did not count for shit in that book. You know, you could bleed just like anyone else. Yeah. And I know, Chris, you read, um, you read a lot of the stuff all the way up to kind of when the prequels started. Um, so obviously Jedi Academy and Thrawn and all that stuff. Um, did you have, uh, I know you got to read a little bit of new Jedi Order. I'm not sure if you read the whole thing but no, what were your feelings on that one. I like it. And you, like you say, you know, there's a lot of things about it that I guess changed the way you could view star Wars in the form of the, uh, of the universe is that it, it did kind of write rules to everything that this is this is how it is this is how it's going to be going forward and it did a good job of setting up what we would see happen from then on and i think like you said retconning and some little things it tweaked 
things, but like it, it didn't create any problems per se. Um, and I think we talked about this earlier about how some of the books leading up from the original trilogy, things like that, the writers did a pretty good job of following the generic story that was out there. Every, every story kind of tied into each other, but there were a few times the problems showed up here and there. This doesn't make sense with this. Um, and when it started to get written in where things were fixed and, and explanations were given for certain things, it definitely helped solidify the story. <clears throat> that being said, <laughs> I think that, uh, I, I mean, I, I agree that it got serious, more serious. And maybe that's because, go figure, that they started realizing that their audience was becoming older. Because by that time in 99, <clears throat> I was, what, 22 years old? And so those of us who grew up with it, those of us that were, you know, those people that are a little older than me that were teenagers when the movies came out originally and when the EU first started being formed and those first nuggets they were getting, when they got to that age, <clears throat> they didn't want kid stories. They didn't want stuff that was softer. They wanted, uh, like I said, there had to be real uh, sacrifices, Steak. <clears throat> stakes. Um, and, and you do say that. I mean, you always knew Han Solo was going to make it through. You always knew in the older books that they were going to make it through. You'd already seen the movies. So when you did read the novelization, you knew it was going to happen. Um, they never, you know, the, the light side of the force, the good guys were always going to win somehow. And you did definitely see that that was not a guarantee. <clears throat> they started adding a lot more to it that um, <clears throat> they had to fight for it. And I'm not sure that they had to do that beforehand. So what I, what I read definitely is more adult. And I think that that, like you said, coming out when the prequels were coming out, they had to do that because go figure again, George Lucas and the people behind these properties understood that while yes, they would get kids in on the prequels and they would get kids in on the new stuff they wanted to find a way to attach the older fans to the newer series and in a way to bring them towards that. And the way to do that was to write something more adult. So they did that very well. Yeah. <clears throat> something yeah. Disney has not done. So <laughs> <laughs> true. Thanks for tuning in to part one of my interview with lethal lightning and Chris Knight from the real review 3000, where we talked about our expanded universe feelings. Stay tuned for part two of this interview where we talk about how we felt when we learned Disney had bought Star Wars and when we found out that the expanding universe was decanonized. Make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, and I'll talk to you guys later. Hey everyone, it's Jeremy from GeeksAndGamers.com and if you're a fan of Geeks and Gamers, please go to our website, visit our merchandise store. We have t-shirts, hoodies, hats, beanies, tank tops, and in the very near future, we're going to have many more products for you to choose from. So thank you for the support. We appreciate it. You guys have a great day, and we will talk to you later.